Hello guys, it's Grumpy. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today we're going to be covering part of the Mine Factory Reloaded mod. Specifically, we're going to be covering uh, Rednet Cable, the Rednet Meter, and the Rednet Historian. Now I'm going to be covering some more advanced stuff like the programmable Rednet Controller, how to use it, the timer functions and all that, but um, that's a little more advanced. So that's kind of more of like an intermediate video, but if you want to use that, you need to learn this first. So that's why I'm covering the basics here. Now, some people are going to know, some people aren't, but basically we're going to be covering the Rednet Cable, the Rednet Meter, and the Rednet Historian. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to cover is this Rednet Cable. It's very easy to craft. You need some redstone and some plastic sheets. Plastic sheets aren't hard to make. It just takes rubber and you cook the rubber. Um, just use the recipe book. You'll figure it out. It's very easy. Um, the red net meter is not, it's not very difficult at all either. Plastic sheets, redstone, and a gold nugget. And here's the historian, plastic sheets, uh, ink, bookshelf, and the cable. So anyway, let's go ahead and cover the cable. Now this cable works similar to the uh, cable from uh, Red Power 2, the bundled cable. Only this stuff's a lot better. If you're not familiar with bundled cable, don't worry about it. I'm just going to explain how to use this stuff. So anyway, this is what it looks like in the world, and this is what it looks like in your inventory. But what this stuff does, it carries redstone signals, and it can carry up to 16 redstone signals, and they can be analog or digital. So if, don't worry, we're going to cover that. So if I went over your head a little bit just now, don't worry. <clears throat> but basically right here on this particular setup, we are using two color channels. We're using white and orange. So if I flip this switch right here, it turns on that lamp. If I flip this switch right here, it turns on that lamp. The reason why is you see that color band that determines which channel you're actually interacting with. So here we're interacting with the orange channel. So this switch is controlling the orange channel. This switch is controlling the white channel. Down here we have the same thing. We got a color band. And since this one's set to white, now it's, or this one's set to orange, that one's set to white. That's the reason it works like it does. So you can see we're here we have white, white, and orange, orange. So once again, this switch controls that lamp. That switch controls that lamp. Now this mod, the Mine Factory Reloaded mod, by default it uses uh, the Precision Sledgehammer, I believe it's called. I don't recommend using that. It's not bad. It's just, it uses Prototype Omni Wrench because it works with lots of different mods. It works with Thermal Craft, Industrial Craft, Build Craft. So if you use this particular wrench right here, you don't have to carry around a bunch of tools in your inventory. Just carry around this one wrench. And so we can use this to change the color mode. So you get your crosshairs right over the white band and click it. And that will change the color of that channel that it's interacting with. If I hold down the shift key, it also controls the, it's the colors, but it's making it go down. So if I just right click, I'm cycling up through the colors. If if I hold down the shift key and right click, I'm cycling down through the colors. So you could have like, uh, say you got a control room and it's controlling stuff. It's controlled a bunch of machinery like 20 or 30 blocks away. Um, you could do, you could control up to 16 items with one cable. Um, so next thing to tell you about this stuff is it has three connection modes. So if we come down here by default, it's in standard mode. So this section of the cable right here, it's in standard mode. Uh, basically what that means is this cable will connect to other pieces of cable or it'll connect to anything that can send or receive a redstone signal. If I right click again, it puts it into force connection mode. It means this cable will automatically connect to any block that's adjacent to it. And finally, right click again and you get cable only connection mode. Um, that this means the cable will only connect to other cable. It will not interface with switches, levers, lamps, or anything like that. So I'm about to show you why that would be useful. Let's say over here we have a lamp and we got a switch to turn it off and on. This, let's say this is one room. We come over here, this would be a different room with another light and another cable. Well, this cable just happens to be running by there. And this, piece, this section right here is in cable connect only mode. So if I flip this switch, watch what happens. Only this lamp comes on. Now by default, this stuff would be in standard connection mode. Standard connection mode, once again, it'll interface with anything. That, that can send or receive redstone. So there we go. If we flip this switch, 
it's operating both lamps now. So this is why we'd use the uh, cable only connect mode. If you run in this cable by something, but you don't want it to interface to it, that's what you do. So over here, I'm going to show you the next thing about this stuff. It'll carry analog signals. What I mean by that is um, typically you think of this as either off or on, like we're transmitting a redstone signal right now, or we're not. We can actually see this over here. The switch is off. This historian's, by the way, showing us the signal traveling through the white channel. We're going to go over that a little bit in a little while. But uh, if all these switches are off, we got an output of zero. If I flip this switch on, we're outputting a high signal, which is actually 15 in Minecraft. There's a reason why uh, you have to use a repeater every 16 blocks in Minecraft. And what happens is the redstone signal is losing strength as it travels through the redstone cable. We can verify that over here. Over here, we have a, a another lever. At the lever we have right here, we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and then like 10. So you can see that over here. We're no, we're still uh, receiving a signal, but uh, it's not maxed out anymore. If I flip this switch on, you can see the signal over there maxes out again. So let me show you this one right here. This one still has a loss, but not quite as much. So let's look at that. There you go. You can see you have a, a loss of like two, two units. So this is interface to the white channel also. But by the time the signal gets here, it's, it's got a strength of like 13 or 14. So now we can actually use this right here next. This is called the red net meter. And what this will do is if you right click a red net cable, it will tell you um, which channels are transmitting. So white's transmitting right now. And it's got a strength of 13. So let me come over here. We'll flip both these switches on. We'll right click it with a red net meter. It'll tell you the white channel is transmitting 15 and the orange channel is transmitting 15. So this meter is very handy if you just want to click on a, on a, on a cable and figure out what's going on in the system. So red net meter, very easy to use, very self-explanatory. You basically see, saw the, the gist of it there. Finally, we're going to be covering the Red Net Historian. I uh, had one somewhere, an extra one. Oh, it's back over here. The Red Net Historian. Once again, here's the recipe. But um, this stuff, you just connect it to the uh, cable, just like that. And this stuff automatically transmits a. Uh, I'm sorry, it automatically interfaces to the Red Net cable on, on the white channel. Let's go ahead and flip the switch. As you can see, they're both displaying the same signal. It's because they're both connected to the white channel. But this gives you a visual rep representation of what's going on over time. So if you know anything about electronics, this would be like an oscilloscope, which shows you amplitude over time. The amplitude is being the strength of the signal. Now over here, I have a programmable redneck controller. I can turn it off and on right here. Um, this the only thing this thing is doing is putting out a pulse. So you can see it here in a second. There's a pulse. Um, so I'm just showing you. Don't worry about the program red net controller. Basically, all you have to know now is it's putting out a pulse. And this thing right here is reading it. And so, um, well, actually, let's go ahead and play with it a little bit. If I can remember how. If I, well, I, I don't remember. I, I don't know if I remember this particular setup. I believe I do. Okay, so let's change. Well, don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm just reprogramming. I'm speeding it up so it puts out more pulses. There you go. So the program, I'm sorry, the Redneck Historian, is, all the thing it's used for is for reading the signal over time. So is there, right there, this thing's putting out pulses. Here you can see it. Another way you can think of that is like, you know, when you, you see a show on TV, some guy is in the hospital, they got him hooked up to all the machinery, and you can see his heartbeat. Well, that's basically what the... Uh, historians doing it showing you the whatever activity is going on in the white channel so that's basically it that's the red net controller um i'm sorry that's the red net cable the red net meter and the red net historian all very easy to use um next tutorial we're getting into the programmable red net controller but this is grumpy i appreciate all you guys watching all your support um Especially all the likes. It really helps my channel out. And it also lets me know if you enjoyed the video and you like it. It lets me know to make more videos of that type. But anyway, this is Grumpy. We will see you next time. And I appreciate you watching.